Okay, so I'm going to sit down because i got to whack the this bar a lot, um, and it's easier than bending over. So, some of you know this saying, live fast, die young, have a good-looking corpse. This is the pro version, quick, fast, die early, throw, structured exceptions. That's me. Classic pearl exception throwing. Die, or croak, or confess, or whatever. That's how you throw an exception. There's more than one way to do it. You catch by wrapping that with eval, and you handle it by looking at dollar app. Right? It looks like this. Everybody's written this code, right? Yes? Okay, problems with classic pearl exceptions. Dollar app can get stepped on. It can get stepped on by crap that isn't even yours. It might be false, in which case your little if thing just blew the hell up. Um, and if it's a string, you're depending on having that information in two different places, and it's going to break. Somebody will break it for you. So we have try-tiny. Yay. Um, and it gives you try, catch, and find it. It handles all the crap stepping on dollar app. It's lightweight. It generally just works. You have to end it with a semicolon, which trips me up about once every other week. Um, don't forget that. It looks like this. Everybody uses try time, right? Yay. Okay. So that just fixed the first three problems. But you still have the problem that if you're, if, you know, you're throwing a, an exception <coughs> to a string, you're depending on the content of that string, and somebody's going to change it. Somebody's going to come along and say, like, uh, your shit's ungrammatical. I'm going to change it, and you just broke exception handling. You can't even really tell where because you're probably parsing it through a regular expression, which doesn't look anything at all like the actual message. So you can't even like hack it out, right? So. You might say, well, we have tests. Our tests will catch that. Really? You have test coverage on your exception cases? Come work with me because I need somebody to write a lot of tests. So what's the solution? You can also throw objects with die. You can die with an object, which means you can cram all sorts of structured crap in there and die with that. And then you can handle it in a structured, intelligent fashion. <coughs> so there's this thing called exception class that I think Wilski wrote. Um, and it's actually kind of cool. You just spell out what your exception class looks like when you load the module. And you can have things like fields, and you can have a little um, sort of structure. You can have child classes, and you, and you can introspect on your objects. And it kind of looks like this. This is an example from the synopsis, which I'm not going to walk through because I really don't want to talk about exception class. Um, so it's got a nice declarative syntax. You can make these nice hierarchies really quickly. You can support, you, you can define macros in line to make throwing particular exception classes easier. But it was, it was sort of predates try tiny not really designed to work really well with it. It uses CDI instead of Moose, which if you're already using Moose, feels like a bit of a waste. Um, so instead, uh, Rick, RJBS, wrote this nice Moose rule <laughs> called Throwable that basically does one thing. It gives you a method called Throw when you consume your shit. So you can have an exception class hierarchy that's just Moose classes alongside the rest of your Moose classes in your, in your business logic or your object model or whatever, have whatever attributes you want, and you just consume the throw overall, gives you a throw method. Um, pros is all the crap that I just said. Um, and it comes, in addition to the throw method, there are other roles that it ships with in the throwable X distribution that give you things like stack traces and a way to do printf ish, uh, printf like message handling. <coughs> it's pretty nice. It's, it's rickish if you know that. It's rickish. <laughs> I haven't found any cons yet, but I haven't really used it that much. Doesn't mean there aren't any. Um, and then, some error handling patterns and any patterns that I've seen recently in a new job situation um, that I just wanted to bring. <coughs> you should use exceptions instead of error flags in the code you write. You should throw exceptions as early as possible. Don't catch exceptions if you're not actually going to attempt to handle them. Just let them propagate. That's what they're there for. And you should design your web application level error handlers to handle your business logic level exceptions. Um, so you might not be able to see this, but. I, I inherited a whole lot of code that basically generated a big ass session object and then passed it into the business logic. And if something went wrong in the business logic, it set a flag in the big ass object. So then every time you came back from calling a business logic method, you checked to see if the error flag was set. And if it was, you died. All hell say Don't do this. <laughs> <laughs> Just don't. It's stupid. Just like throw an exception. If you forget one of those checks after you call a business logic model then when something does go wrong, you're going to be looking at the method after the method that actually had the problem. Um, and a lot of times we were passing around this big, god-awful, huge session object just so people could get access to the flag. Um, it, it's stupid. Use exceptions instead of error flags. Throw exceptions as early as possible. Do not have like 500 lines and then die because you didn't get past something that you expected. Do that as soon as you unpack dollar underscore, please. Uh, the quicker you can die, the better, because it's less code that you have to look at to find where the bug is. Don't catch exceptions except to handle them. Most of the time, your business logic code can't handle an exception. That's why it's throwing it in the first place. If you fix it, you wouldn't throw the damn exception. If you're going to catch it, try to fix it. Um, 
And I'm just going to skip over that. Thank you.